everybody ready? Girls and boys? Bright shining faces? All in their places? <laughs> Bruce and Alfredo cutting up today. They're having a good time. Ever since I came in, they're cutting up. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for today. We just love you, God. We just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for what you're doing in this place. Father, thank you for the opulence. Thank you, God. We just honor you. What, a, what an awesome privilege to come and be with you. Father, to make prayer, to come to the place of prayer, to hear your word, to speak your word. I pray that your word would run swiftly and be glorified. I pray, Father, that as we assemble together the body of Christ, your body, your bride, that we would be strengthened, every ligament, every joint, every piece, every part, Father. Any area that is limp or lame, God, would be quickened and healed. And I pray, Father, that just our mutual assembling and contributions, Father, that today we would be strengthened with might in our inner man, God. Lord Jesus, can these bones live any dry place, any dry area? Father, these bones shall live. They not only shall live, but Father, they shall be an exceeding great army. And I thank you for this opulence, opulence of prayer, opulence of hunger for you, opulence of pursuit of you, Father, opulence of spiritual understanding, of revelation. Opulence, Father, in spirituals in all areas, God. In faith, hope, and love, opulence. I just speak it over this house and we continue to cry opulence. We continue to cry out for what you're doing, God. Your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. And we just honor you and bless you today, God. You're worthy of praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We just finished the school year. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray, right? Bruce has got a few more days, right? But we finished Friday. Pat, LA, we were just excited. Hey, okay, we were really excited. So uh, it was a wonderful time. And the Lord just kind of had a, a mini revival the last week of school, he had all kind of plans and guest speakers, and he just kind of had his way, and he set it up. And before that, we had Louis Gomer, and then we had uh, Jonathan Bolden from Alert Cadet, or Alert International, and then we had uh, four alert men that came Friday. And boy, they just spoke the word of the Lord. And then we had an elementary uh, prayer time. And the girls, the ladies, the little girls and the boys just got up weeping about what God had done at this school this year. And I tell you what, it was amazing. We had uh, one man, and I'm not talking to any of these outside people. You know, I'm not giving them insider information or anything about the state of affairs or any of the kids or anything. And, and the uh, on Friday, uh, Captain uh, Rick Warner came up and he said, uh, why didn't y'all come up first to pray for us? Why was it the elementary? And uh, they said, I don't know. And he said, because y'all are ashamed of the gospel. And so, and he preached the gospel there for a few minutes. Good morning, y'all. He preached the gospel. And he shared with them Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Jesus Christ, for it is the power of and we just had a good old-fashioned altar call. We asked for those who were ashamed of the gospel to repent. And we had five or six teenagers that repented. So we've had a good, we've had a great week. Some of us are a little tired, but that's okay, isn't it? <laughs> we made it, Victoria. Yeah, you want to do it? We just did our hip hip hooray. You want to do one? Sure. Okay. Hip hooray. All right. Hip hip hooray. My roommate in college, Yippee Skippy, used to say. Uh, yeah, it's just, I never heard of Yippee Skippy before, Megan, but he had a Yippee Skippy in him. And uh, I always remember that, Yippee Skippy. Okay, so uh, 
Brother Jeff shared to the t with the teachers on Friday, and uh, I kind of had a word working in me, but I want to kind of merge these two words a little bit, and this would be kind of called, love is going to take us to the top of the mountain. Okay, love is going to take us to the top because we've got to go higher and we've got to go deeper. There's more opulence. We've got to go stronger, right? And to do what we've got to do, we've got to be outfitted for this. And we have been prepared, but we still have to go deeper. We have to go higher. We have to go more intense. And um, the other day, the Lord spoke to me about being fit for the kingdom. Fitness, full of fitting, full of uh, preparing for what he has us to do. And so that was what I was going to share, but I'm going to kind of merge these two things together. And if you start off in John 15, we have to do something in order to bear fruit, okay? We have to do something in order to uh, be fruitful, to be productive, and to be on the right track. And uh, if you look through John 15, it starts in verse 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. There's only one life source. And who is that? Jesus Christ. So we must stay intensely close to Him. And in these last days, it's very, very uh, important that we do. Because there is a spirit of deception out working. Have we not seen that? Yeah. And there was an assayer that came and the Lord tested us and He allowed the devil to test us. And it was a glorious test. It was wonderful. Okay? It's glorious. And we have to stay close to Him in order to bear fruit and to know what He's wanting to do. I am the true vine and my husband is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So, what does he want us to do? He wants us to bear fruit, and then he wants us to bear more fruit. Okay? It's just like in sports, you know, when I was running track, and the coach says, okay, that was great, you did that, now I want more. I want to increase your lung capacity. I want you to run faster now for longer periods of time. And you're like, wow, I just th I thought I did pretty good there. You know, we're going to run six uh, quarter, quarter miles at 80 seconds, and you'll have a two minutes, two and a half minutes break in between. Until at the end of the season, we went up to 14 quarter miles, 75 seconds with 45 second break. 14 quarter miles, it's 75 seconds with a 45 second break in between. Now that's one lap around the track. It's pretty much as fast as you can go. 45 seconds. So it was like he was turning it into a sprint. So by the end of the season, you know, we just kind of do that workout and have a piece of bubble gum and say a joke in between and Say something while we're running the race. At the beginning of the season, though, right? <laughs> you know, we're just about to die, right? And everybody's laughing at us and everything. And then by the end of the season, we're making jokes. As we're running it, we're laughing, chewing a bubble gum, blowing a bubble. And our heart rate would stay low. Our lung capacity would increase to where... After 45 seconds, we're like, okay, you, almost 30 seconds. You're like, all right, I'm ready to go again. And you could just run it. And it was amazing what would happen. And then when you got in the meet, he was preparing you for to stand in front of the crowds of people and to run the race and to look like you were in shape, right? And to run that race well. And so we have a race to run. And, um, you know, we have a lot to do, and he's wanting to continue to increase our fruit. And we just say, Lord, help us to go to that next level. Help us to engage more. Help us uh, prune us, purge us, and increase us. And may we see this opportunity to go deeper in you. 
Isn't that exciting? He wants more. Okay? And you can have, you know, different people have different reactions to this, right? When he gave those talents out, you know, the first two had a reaction of, hey, this wasn't even mine in the first place. I didn't get put on this earth for my own self anyway, so I'm going to make as much as I can for him. And the last guy said, well, you don't, you're not doing anything, you know, you, you you sow or you were expecting uh, products where you didn't, you, you weren't here down here involved in this and you just made me do all this and you pushed me harder and I just stuck mine in the dirt so I could give it back to you. And he said, you wicked and unprofitable servant. Okay, so we want to, he, he's expecting a lot out of us and he wants to use us and if we abide in him, Verse 4, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. So we're not doing it on our own, are we? No, we're attached to the life source. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. All right. So there is this abiding. And he says uh, in verse 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. All right. And then verse 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Father, I pray that we would bear more fruit. Multiply. I pray we would be opulent fruit producers. And that, Father, the fruit that we bear with our children, with our husbands, with our wives, with our friends, with the body of Christ, that it would remain and that it would be beautiful, lasting, enduring fruit. And give us the courage to be purged, to be pruned, that you might multiply your fruit. I speak over this house, myself, as well as everyone here. Opulent fruit in Jesus' name. Opulence in fruit production, God. And that this summer, we would take this opportunity to abide in you in a whole new dimension. Isn't that exciting? Okay, so... <clears throat> What's going to take us higher? What's going to take us deeper? What's going to take us stronger? It's going to be abiding in Him. It's going to be the love of God, right? Jeff talked about this uh, Friday. You know, we all, when we get involved in teaching school or working with children, we say, oh, I just love children, right? And that lasts only so long, okay? Because, yes, you're geared to children. You can be geared to children. I'm geared to children, teenagers. But then there's a certain point when that love runs out, right? Because that's a gift or that's a, that's a, uh, that's a you know, you're, you're geared that way maybe or you're slanted that way. You have a certain anointing. But even that will run out, right? 1 Corinthians 13 says, you know, words will run out. Prophecies will cease, Right? All those things will cease, but there's one thing that remains. And what is that? And that's love for who? For God. I was not, I will, I was not disobedient to the what vision? The heavenly vision. That's in the book of Acts, right? I don't know what chapter, but I was not obedient to the heavenly vision. <clears throat> Lies, pay attention. You gotta pay attention to what you're doing up there. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, right? And so uh, you've got to constantly check in with that, and that takes you where with your obedience? It takes you where? It takes you back to a person, right? When he says, I want you to go there, and I want you to do this. Right, And then when it all seems like it's falling apart and the bottom's falling out and everyone's leaving and everybody, you know, the, uh, the, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. 
right? What do you do? Are you chicken little? Huh? Or do you say, well, if the sky's falling, bring it on. Because he told me to stand right here and be right here. In the last days, many will be saying, I am the Christ. I am he. There will be signs, false signs, all kind of things will be going on, right? And so it's a time and a season that we must be so locked in with him and this person, Jesus Christ. And that's what's going to take us higher. And that's what's going to settle us and establish us and anchor. He is an anchor for our soul, right? And I'm talking to the choir here because... I'm looking out at anchors. <laughs> but we're videoing it. We'll send it places, okay? And, and we're going to get more, okay? So um, there's an anchor here, and we have to keep looking at Jesus, don't we? Yeah. I want to start off in Song of Solomon chapter 4, okay? And everybody here understands <clears throat> that there's a couple different ways that you can look at from different perspectives from Song of Solomon, the love between a husband and a wife, <clears throat> love in a marital context, but also our love for Jesus Christ, okay? And our passion for Him. And uh, verse 1 says, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair, Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. There is a view of God. We're going to have to see Jesus and we're going to have to be looking at him and we're going to have to, our life is going to have to say, Behold, remember uh, John, behold the Lamb of God. He was looking at something. He was seeing something and he said, Okay, I've taken you this far. Now look at him. He is beautiful to behold. He is altogether lovely. That is the view and that is the uh, position or the profile that we're going to have to go in or be in to go to the next level in this opulence. Okay, last week we talked about corresponding action, right? You have to believe. You have to have faith. We're talking now about you're going to have to behold him in a whole new way. Maybe in the way when you first met him, but he wants to take it even farther than that into this beholding him. And when you behold him, you say to him, thou art what? Fair. Thou art fair. You are altogether lovely. You are beautiful. I remember... When uh, I was at the Baptist church and this boy came from the high school, he was leading a revival at the local public school. He had a dream or a vision. God spoke to him to, to come and pray for me for the baptism in the Holy Ghost at my Baptist church on a Wednesday night. So we went in their car and the whole youth group circled around the car. And he said, I said, man, I am scared to death. But I said, Lord, if this is really from you, It'll, it'll go fine, right? So I started praying. All of a sudden, I saw Jesus, and he was just beautiful. And all I could do is say, Jesus, you are beautiful. And I just saw, I was like, I don't know how long we were in there, but it was just amazing, okay? And it was the first time, you know, in Isaiah, I saw the Lord, High and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. What are, we, what are we looking at today? What do we see? What is our perspective? Huh? Remember last week we were talking about, is this valuable? Did you come and reserve your seat today? Is it valuable here? Yeah. Then I had better come and reserve my seat. I said it kind of jokingly, but, but yeah, it... It's all dependent on your perspective. Open your eyes to the heavenlies, Lord. Open their eyes because if they, if you open their eyes, what will they see along the mountaintops? 
chariots of God, the chariots of fire. I have someone helping me. I have someone behind me. I have the host of heaven. I have someone that supports me. He said, remember, there's prophecies been through. If you'll step out, I will be there, right? Yeah. I will be there to meet you. If you open your mouth, I will fill it, right? Even yesterday, you know, I just love it when this happens. You know, we schedule this event. I try not to schedule anything that, I, that that's not, uh, that the Lord doesn't prompt me to do, okay? I, I mean, that's my... That's my goal, and I mean, that's my desire, okay? You miss it, you, you get things wrong. And so everybody's like, it's going to rain it out, it's going to rain it out, it's not going to work, it's not, you know, that's just human nature, right? And then, and then we wake up, and it's still, and then when it starts, it's just like the sun comes out, there's no clouds. Don't y'all just love that about God? Huh? If no one else notices... I noticed that, right? And I, look, I feel my sunburn on the back of my cow. I go, man, you are, you are beautiful. You know, the forecast was for it to rain, and yet you provided this event. You know, I don't know if anyone sees or, or cares or whatever, but you provided this moment, and you, did, did you do that just for me? Or, I mean, you are beautiful. You are faithful. Huh? And so, what is our perspective on this? Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes. Now, I haven't done the full research, but someone in here may know, but a, dove, a dove's eye, it has a certain uh, penetrating look that there is an intimacy in, in two doves, okay? Uh, and and there is a, there's a scientific study there, Dwayne, <laughs> He may know already know about this, but there is a study on doves' eyes, and when when doves lock eyes with each other, it's like there's nothing separating that that stare, that look, and that and that's the type and shadow there. All right, so song of song. There's this look. There's this um, th this thing that we've got to develop with Christ. Now let's turn over to Hebrews chapter twelve for a second. We're not going to leave Song of Solomon. Don't worry. We're coming back. But if we turn over to Hebrews chapter 12, it says to do what? Does anybody know? Well, it says look away, but look to who? Looking, verse 2, Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto who? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, we don't have a Lord and Savior that is not acquainted with our sorrows and griefs, do we? Huh? He, he started it and He finished it. If you were here for Bible this week, Brother Oliver talked about are you finishing what God called you? He who is he who began a good work in you, Sally, is faithful to what? Finish it. All I have to do is stay connected, right? I just have to stay in place. I have to stay available. I have to stay obedient to the heavenly calling. I have to step out on faith. I have to obey. I have to stay connected. And He will be doing the finishing in me. So what I'm talking about today is there is a abiding, there is a looking to Jesus, there is a thou art fair, there is a gaze. And now within that gaze, friends, within that gaze, there is a increased intensity that He wants to establish. And that gaze is in prayer. That gaze is in intimacy with Him. That gaze is in meditation on His Word. That gaze is in studying His Word. That gaze is in feeding on Him. That gaze is, is in spending time worshiping Him. I want to grow in these areas. 
I want, there's a call, there's a cry, there's, there's a gaze. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus, we just stop right now and we say, intensify these dove's eyes. Father, may my eyes not be distracted in this hour. May my abiding increase. Father, Father, I pray that you would draw, if you draw me, I will. I'm going to run to you. Draw me, Father. Irritate me. Agitate me. Call me. Visit me. Speak to me, Father. Give me no rest. I pray. I want you to be my rest. I want you to be my entertainment. I want you to be my peace, my joy, my everything in you. Father, may, may this house in you we live and breathe and move and have our being, Lord. I pray, Father, for each of us to increase in a culture, this culture of loving you and looking at you and in, intensely pursuing you individually in our own houses as well as in this corporate house, Father. Intensify this culture in this place of staring at you and looking at you and gazing on you. Thou art fair, my beloved. Intensify, Father. Where I am weak, Father, where my prayers are weak, where I am distracted, where I am looking in other directions, God, where I am looking at lesser lovers, Father, where I am eating things in spirit that I shouldn't be, Father, any area of our lives, God. May we be single-eyed, single-eyed. The whole When we have a single eye, the whole body is pure, Father. Fill us all in all, God. In Jesus' name, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, we're going to have to look to him. He's going to take us to the top of the mountain. He's going to cause even young men do what? Grow tired and weary, stumble and fall. But they that, wait, the, they that intertwine themselves with him. It's the only chance you've got. And it's, it's, a great, it's a great thing. It's going to take you higher and it's going to increase and you're going to feel the wind under your wings. You already are. And He's going to settle you and you being totally settled on Him. And the other reason we're going to need to see this is because He went through something that we're going to have to go through. He carried his cross and you have to carry your cross. I listen to, I encourage you on YouTube, uh, Jim Cadiesel, the Jesus in, in Mel Gibson's The Passion. Did everybody see that? If you type in Jim Cadiesel's interview uh, about The Passion, it is 40 minutes and you will love it. Okay. Jim, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if you say, I just typed in uh, Passion of Christ interview with main actor. And, and it came up. And I think it's on uh, possibly a Catholic channel, YouTube channel. And I don't know if he was speaking at a Catholic church. But this interview was amazing. The guy is just trying to, you know, basically get some information from him. Talk about the movie. And then Jim Cadiesel just gives this prophetic um, the statement. He says, we don't, we're not used to suffering. You know, he says, you know, a lot of people say, you know, Jesus took it all so I don't have to take it, which is, there's, that's theologically true. But he says, but yes, you're going to have to take yours. And he began to tell what happened while he was doing it. And he said he had pneumonia in the middle of the movie. And his lungs filled up and he had to fast during like a weeks of the movie. And they were, they were flogging him with a cat of nine tails and they missed 
the uh, target and they flogged him. 14 inch gash. So everybody's going to want to go back and see the movie, right? I encourage you to do, see because I had just seen the movie and then Melissa found the interview, I guess, a, you know, a few weeks ago. So I watched the interview last night. And then he said when they put him on the cross, they accidentally dropped him. He had the cross on him, dropped him, and dislocated his left shoulder. So he's got a, a, a serious, serious case of pneumonia. He's been fasting. He's got his shoulder dislocated, and he's been flogged. Okay, And so the whole time, he said he's praying the whole time. And he says, you know, Mel is a chain smoker and said, I feel called to do this movie for 15 years. God has told me to do this movie. And he's a chain smoker and he would use the Lord's name in vain. And the main actor would say, he, he would just turn to him and say, do not talk about my father like that. And so he said... He said he would pray the whole time and everything, and he's going through all of this. And in the last scene, they lifted up the cross, and he said there was uh, 35 mile an hour winds. The clouds were down like at a low, low range. Okay, and he said he couldn't hear anything because he was like in the eye of the storm, dislocated shoulder, been fasting, to pneumonia. And, and the doctor came out and said, Mel, I, I'm just, I'm going to have to check him right here on the spot. So they put the, the stethoscope up to him. And the doctor said to Mel, he, serious, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm not exaggerating, he could die up here. And so Mel looked at him and he said, uh, he said, he said, Mel said, what do you want to do? And, and the actor said, this is between, this is not me doing a movie. This is between me and God. And he said, if he wants me to die on this spot, I'm willing to do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, wow. So, but it wasn't over. In that last scene, uh, lightning came down from heaven and struck him. Right in the heart. I mean, no, I'm serious. Like lightning, and 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 the witnesses, all they could see was a flash of light hit him, and then fire on both sides, and they just saw this like uh, this like uh, light or cloud envelop him, and that was the last scene of the movie. He was struck by lightning. And he said, he said, the actor said there were the believers, non-believers, and fence riders. And he said everyone went down on the ground and bowed low. And he said the whole, uh, there was an earthquake, like a, not an earthquake, but like the, the, the earth shook. This is in the movie. <laughs> so he was saying, this actor was saying, you're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to carry your cross and, and it's God's will for you to, to, 